This video is going to show the basic screen layout and uh, the real basics of the 4C CAD CAM software system. Uh, first off, 4C stands for CAD, CAM, CMM, and CNC. So uh, we're going to focus just on three out of the four for this video, and that is the CAD, CAM, and CNC. So that means basically you can program a CAD part, that's the design work, or you can import a CAD file from an external source like a SolidWorks or something like that. And then you can put a toolpath on that CAD file regardless of the source. And then you can actually operate the machine all with one built-in package here. So we're just gonna kind of show the different areas of the software, the different screens. In the upper left-hand corner is where you have the operator interface. So this is where you can move the machine around. If I push X plus, you see the XDRO moving and Y and Z. And if we were actually connected to a machine right now, the machine would actually be moving as well. If I show the tool on the screen, um, when I move the XYZ, you see the, the tool moving, okay? And this is also where you press cycle start. So like when you're ready to run a program, you press cycle start, the machine starts to, uh, to move around. I won't go into the details of all the different functions. Um, most of it's pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so um, then in the same uh, area up here, we have a tab where we can switch over to CAD operations. So this is where our CAD program um, is held. So if we import like a SolidWorks file, a step file, this is gonna be very simple. It's gonna have one command that just says import file or something like that. And, um, or if you design a part in here, this can get pretty complicated depending on what it is. Okay, so now we come down here to the table of tools, and then in the same uh, pane over here, we have a table of fixtures and feeds and speeds. I won't get into too much detail here, but um, the tools are where you select the tool that's um, in, base, in operation. It's where you uh, set up things such as the, um, the tool shank profile and the diameter of the tool and the length and the number of flutes, the type of tool, this sort of thing, okay? And everything I'm discussing here, uh, we're, we will discuss in more detail in a later video. So I won't go into too much detail here. Table of fixtures, this is, this is essentially a, a list of all your zero offsets from the machine home. So it's a similar, to anyone that's that used G-codes, this is similar to like a G54, okay? Only we're not, uh, we can have an unlimited number of fixtures and you can name them and um, that sort of thing. Uh, but the concept is really the same. So feeds and speeds, this is typically something that um, is, it's not used that commonly because uh, once these materials are set up, uh, you just select them. You don't really have to edit these or modify them too often. Uh, we do have things like global feeds and speeds, like if we want to put a rapid feed in there and then use that commonly throughout the program, we can do that. Um, but this is probably the least used out of all the um, main screens on the, on the interface here. We'll come back to this again in, in a later video. Okay, so now the center screen here is where we have all of our um, graphics programs. And when you have multiple uh, graphics open, you'll see the tabs uh, kind of line up here across the top. And um, you can even take these and kind of move them around to wherever you want if you have a computer with multiple screens, that sort of thing. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and dock this back to the middle. On the right-hand side over here, we have uh, on the top we, we have our list of cam operations. So we'll have things like a pocket, um, you know, things like that. And, um, and then we have uh, for, you can also run G codes on this machine. So you would insert like a G code instruction and then you can actually edit the G codes here. Okay, so we don't have anything loaded right now. That's why everything's kind of blank. Okay, so let's drop down to the bottom over here. And we have, um, uh, the toolbox that has all of the uh, and cam operations that the machine is capable of doing. Okay, so uh, real quick here, everything on the right side is related to uh, to to the CAD, and everything on the on the sorry, everything on the left side is is related to CAD. Everything on the right side is related to CAM. So the toolbox here are all the instructions that the machine can run as far as the CAM goes. So if we open up like can cycles, we have things like bolt circles, circular moves, peg drills, pockets, things like that. And um, really the most useful as far as 4C goes are all the instructions under the 3D CAD um, item here. These are all of the CAD or the CAM instructions that pull from CAD data. Okay. 
So uh, we'll come back to this, and this is probably going to be the most commonly used uh, part of the software. The properties, uh, let's just go ahead and add an instruction. If I right click, it adds the simplest of all commands. It's called a mill. So if I click on that, it uh, populates the properties with the properties for that mill instruction. Okay, And that's not the only way to edit. That's one of the ways to edit. This is probably not uh, that common. We might actually hide this at some point in the future. Um, more common way to edit is just to drop down these items in here and edit directly. Okay, so um, let's just go ahead and delete our program here. So over here we have our list of part programs. You can essentially have as many uh, CAM toolpath operations uh, in the system at one time as you'd like. And this is also where the CAD programs are held. So you can also have as many different CAD programs as you'd like. Okay. And then finally, interactive um, is a way that you can interact with the instructions up here. So for instance, if I have a few mill instructions and I click on this one, I can say move to XY location, and now the machine is going to move to that location. Or I can move the machine around to like this location, say set XY location. Now this point ha uh, has just been assigned from our XYZ uh, DRO over here and to assign it to the XYZ um, second point here. Okay, and then um, <clears throat> depending on the um, add-ins that you have installed on your machine, you, there, you may have some tabs located up here along the top and maybe even some more windows throughout the program. Uh, here at the bottom we have a G54 and G59 um, fixture offsets, which is the same thing as our table of fixtures over here, just, just different values of course. Um, so it all just depends on what add-ins you have. The software, we have these things called add-ins, so, so you can configure the machine and the software um, in multiple ways for a variety of different machines and different applications. So the, what, what I, one of them that I have installed here is Toolpath Simulation. So I can just take this um, slider bar and I can see my tool moving along my toolpath. Okay, Not so useful with this simple program, but if you have a bigger program, it becomes uh, um, really important, very useful. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and actually load a program. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, import a step file. And then we'll go ahead and pick this one right here. It's kind of just a sample test program. Real basic. So um, the one problem with this is if I do a top view, you kind of see we're looking down the side. This is a common um, way that parts are, are, are designed. They kind of design instead of things oriented in the way that the machine would, you would commonly set it up in a machine. They're located with the Y axis is up. So there are a few ways that you can um, use it like this. One is to actually rotate the part 90 degrees around the x-axis so that the top is facing up. Let's go ahead and do that. That's the simplest way to get going, and I might go ahead and show another way. Um, but for now, this is going to work. So we go ahead and select that. So sorry, let's back up here. Let's delete that instruction. Okay, so right now in our CAD operations, we just have the one step file, which is just importing the step file. Okay, so then I come up here to 3D CAD and then we click on transform and then we have to select the solid okay so we just click on the solid and that's it and hit OK if we had multiple solids we'd select on the multiple solids so then I can open that up in the hierarchy here and we can see that there's one solid selected but there are zero transforms um, to perform on this operation right so it's not going to go anywhere so if I click right here I'm then going to go ahead and add a rotate instruction Okay, and this defaults to rotate around the x-axis. We're going to go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees. Okay. So now it's oriented in the way that we would um, actually set it up in like a vise or however, whatever our fixture is. Okay, when I click a top view, I'm looking straight down the top. Okay, and then we can just start programming directly on this. Okay. So let's pretend for a second that we um, didn't want to do that. So we're going to remove the transform instruction, and now we're back to where we were. Okay. So there's another way to do it where we can leave the part exactly where it is, and we can just tell the software that we're going to work on this face over here. Okay. So let's just jump right in and start programming the toolpath. Let's go over here to our 2D instructions and insert a pocket, and 
Now in the starting point, there's uh, a working origin. We can just click on that. And now this brings up the select plane. Um, so we just have to decide where we're gonna set our zero um, off of. A common thing to do would be to go off of the bottom, right? Because you just put the, you basically if you put this in a vise, you just touch off on the bottom of the vise, that's your Z zero. Another common um, way to do this would be to touch off on the top, like the top left-hand corner or something like that. We, you can see we don't have an edge uh, to define our zero in the upper left-hand corner because that's cut away, right? The only, the closest edge that we have is like this point right here. But of course, that's not where the material is starting on. We don't know where that point is until we have cut down that low. So the way we would handle that is turn on the stock workpiece. And um, uh, well, we haven't set up these dimensions yet, but it defaults to 100 thousandths on each side of extra stock. So let's go ahead and just assume that that is correct. That's, that's what we have. So I can now just click on this corner right here. And that pretty much uh, gives us our, our zero or X, Y, Z, zero, but the orientation is wrong, right? The orientation lines up to uh, kind of the original orientation or the world orientation. So what I do here is click on change orientation until I get what I want, okay? So now that's pretty close. So all I have to do here is my X axis is pointed in the right direction, my Y axis is pointed in the wrong direction, and my Z is also pointed in the wrong direction. So if I just do a flip Y, that will automatically flip the Y to the other side, which has to change one of the other axes. So it changes the Z and it leaves the X alone. And we'll get into some of these other um, options here in, in another video. There are sometimes more complicated situations where you have to um, pick an origin uh, in a variety of different ways. <clears throat> so for right now, we'll call this good. So go ahead and hit OK there. And now we're really just essentially just working on this face up here. So I'll go ahead and program this real quick, just to change the machine. And then I'm just gonna click on this guy right here. And we'll tell it that we want to find. And then we can just tell it to recompute. And I probably have a tool that's way too big to fit in there. Yeah, I'm telling it to use a two and a half inch shell mill. That's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and pick uh, like a 3 8 flat bottom end mill. I'm not even too sure what size of part this is. Yeah, that looks, that looks better. So right now it's going through the islands. I, I, I have the islands uh, turned off, so that's okay for demonstration. So now I have my uh, origin set up over here in the upper left-hand corner of the stock workpiece. Now I would have to actually take the machine and touch off on the same upper left-hand corner, and then zero my X, Y, and Z, and, and that's pretty much it. Then I would just press cycle start and the machine would go and actually cut out that part. Okay, so now you can see our dimensions are all relative to the upper left-hand corner, right? We're in the X right around two inches, which is correct, and the Y is negative one, and the Z is feeding down from zero into the part. Okay. Okay, so that's a real basic system and just kind of shows the end-to-end -end process of explaining all the different screens and then taking a very simple part, importing the CAD drawing, and then getting it uh, into operation and running. Hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.